It's that time of the year when the gems and jewellery sector works overtime to meet the festive demand. The gold prices are at a six-year highs in the Indian markets. Experts believe that this might act as a deterrent for the buyers. Over the last two years, government policy framework has meant that the trade also has shifted from the unorganized sector to the organized sector. Meanwhile, the drought-like situation in five states has hit the rural demand when it comes to gems and precious stones. Both diamond jewelry and platinum demand has been boosted. And when it comes to crude oil prices from last Diwali, the Brent prices have gone up by 18%, while Nymex is up by 14% as well. It's a sorry state of affairs, though, when it comes to the metal prices. In last one year, it's only steel which has given positive returns since last Diwali. Lead and zinc have seen the largest declines coming in, both falling by 20% each. And to discuss this further, we have the whole set of guests joining us today. Kunal Shah from Nirmal Bank Commodities. Renisha Chanani is from Monarch Net Worth. We also have Naveen Mathur from Anand Rathi Shares and Stock Brokers. And also joining us today is Prathamesh Malia of Angel Commodities. Is broking. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us, Renisha, as well. Let's start with the precious metal state for, to start with. The first half of 2018, of course, wasn't so great. We have seen the gold prices pick up recently now. If you look at the last Diwali until now, it's nearly 8% of gains coming in until now. Renisha, I would like to begin with you. What is your sense on the precious metal space? I mean, we started the year with most people telling us that silver perhaps will outperform gold. That clearly has not been seen. Gold continues to hold its firmness here. At these levels where we are trading at a six-year highs, what is your sense on where are we headed from here on? Hi, Manisha. I think uh, what you're saying is very much right that silver was uh, expected to outperform uh, gold this year. But as base metals have not performed, uh, we have seen that from the month of April, US-China trade war started and then base metals were hammered. And this didn't give support much to the silver prices and they have been trading lackluster from uh, so many months. But I think uh, from last one month, the you know uh, movement has gathered up and we, we are finally seeing some bullishness coming coming in uh, gold and silver, both the metals. And uh, there are a lot of factors that are impacting right now to the prices. We have seen that central banks have started again accumulating gold in last quarter. As per WGC data, there is around 150 tons of uh, you know buying by central banks in last quarter. And this has compensated by the uh, ETF selling that has coming in from few months. So overall, investment demand is good. Speculative demand is also very good. We have seen that speculative interest has again risen up, which was at record low levels. It is again turning up. And festive demand is also going to come uh, within now uh, next one or month. So overall, I am seeing that prices will recover from here. And uh, 2019 also would be a good year for precious metal as I think Fed will stop, you know, uh, wrapping up. It will start wrapping up its interest rate cycles. And in the second half of the year, we'll see ECB also raising its interest rates. So this will uh, give some uh, negativity to dollar and in turn will give positivity to a precious metal pack. So I'm bullish on gold and silver, at least expecting 10% gains from current levels. So my view is overall bullish uh, till next Diwali. All right, 10% gains in gold and silver. Prathamish, what is your sense? Are you equally bullish on gold and silver? What levels do you see getting in here? And how much do you think the rupee uh, movement also could impact the calculations? Uh, yes, uh, Manisha, I think as far as gold uh, goes for Indian consumers, it is really not the price. I think uh, because the it is mainly for consumption. So from a returns perspective per se, um, I would really not, uh, not uh, look at it. Uh, but yes, from an international perspective, I think uh, 8 to 10 percent uh, uh, possibilities there if you look from an year perspective or 8 month perspective per se. Uh, but I still believe uh, uh, there is not much uh, bullishness left in gold because uh, interstate cycle from the US as the nation I mentioned uh, would possibly go in 2019 as well as ECB starting its interest rate hike is something that would really not uh, offer uh, a respite to gold because uh, an era of uh, rising interest rates does not really favor uh, gold prices. So in that say not the bullish on gold but yes uh, uh, you can uh, have uh, your uh, portfolio allocation at least uh, 7 to 8 percent in gold uh, while as for silver goes I think uh, 40,000 in the Indian markets is something what we're looking at uh, just uh, 7 to 8 percent move from current levels. 
So not so bullish, but yes, you can have it in your portfolio. <laughs> All right. Some bullishness is good for us as we stand right now because this year started really bad and the way we seem to be ending it is clearly on the positive side here. Turning to the studio guests now and uh, Kunal, to you, uh, what is your sense? Precious metals finally are getting their due. Uh, we haven't had such a great year, but at these current levels with the kind of global people uh, forecasting it much higher, even 1400 perhaps in the next year, are you, are you in, in with that? Uh, I'm actually very bullish on gold, and I think that uh, in, in past shows from last decade, I generally recommend that 8 to 10 percent should be uh, allotted in gold. I'm of the view that percentage should shift to 14 to 15 percent, mm -hmm. as high as it. Mm -hmm. uh, because the global economy is right now in uncharted territory. Sure. No one is going to know what's going to happen. Uh, I think the biggest uh, problem right now is in the global economy that when Federal Reserve is selling the bonds on, of their balance sheet, it's creating a lot of volatility. It's creating a lot of uncertainty. So in this kind of uh, atmosphere, having gold in your portfolio is must. So on one hand, we have US GDP numbers coming in at 4%, 3.5%, and interest rate going up, which is theoretically a negative for gold. But the fact is, along with the rising interest rate, we are also seeing something called balance sheet reduction. The Federal Reserve balance sheet in last 10 years have uh, expanded by more than four and a half, five times. And now that balance sheet is shrinking roughly about $40 billion per month that comes to almost $500 billion per year. So this liquidity is going to come off the market. And what it is going to do to the other asset class? No one knows it. Uh, this is the first time this kind of experiment has been done in last century. So in this environment, more than the returns point of view, having gold is a must. I'm very bullish and I think that gold prices can hit levels conservatively $1,400 and I won't be surprised even if it tests and uh, levels of $1,450 to $1,500 in a span of one and a half years. And what's your sense on the Indian prices then, Kunal? Because rupee is yet another factor to look into here. Yeah, so let us say if rupees start appreciating after we've seen uh, a 15% fall in rupee, mm. if rupees start appreciating from present levels and uh, perhaps test levels of, say, 69 or... So in that case, of 3 to 4% or maybe perhaps 5% of uh, gold's appreciation can be uh, completely taken off by rupee. But I think when you are talking about the upside of 10 to 15%, still you are likely to get gold conservatively 35 to 36,000 on MCX by next Diwali. So uh, I'm talking about conservative 10 to 12% return from this levels. All right, so we just keep getting more bullish here when it comes to the gold prices going forward. Coming to you as well, uh, Naveen, what is your sense? Are you in agreement with all the other three panelists or are you somewhere in the middle? I think... Uh, uh, I won't go for that bullishness uh, okay. for the gold prices. Uh, everybody has their own perceptions to look into. I think, Panisha, uh, the $1,200, $1,270 which we saw last year, mm. it's hovering at around 1233 mm. The reason is simple. The U.S. is onto the inflation trend. We are seeing inflation at around 2%. And that's where the moderation of the interest rates are going to come in. Now, with that particular moderation, or the normalization of the interest rates, the dollar is bound to appreciate. Plus, the reserve currency factor of the dollar would also help us uh, or help the currency to move a little bit on the upside. Having said that, there are certain geopolitical risks which continue in the Middle East, which will gonna impact the markets largely globally, uh, both the US and the Indian markets in terms of the gold prices. Mm. I think overall, People are talking about $1,300, $1,400 right here. I think around $1,250 to $1,300 would be something where it's going to be stabilizing at. I'm not too bullish on $1,400. You no, know, but this but year we have seen a range of $1,156, $1,159 $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, on the lower. $1,159 to $1,366 on the higher side. And that was the reason, just because of a simple reason of the crude and the depreciation of Indian rupee, which affected hmm. the markets here too. Hmm. See, the M6 prices touch approximately a high of, if I'm not mistaken, at 32,300 rupees right, right. in October sometime back. Hmm. And we are trading at around 31,650. The fundamental news of crude plus the depreciative rupee led it to 32,000 plus kind of a figure. Hmm. But beyond that, there is nothing as such which is positive. You have seen the import figures have gone down. Right. Um, we are seeing rupees stabilizing now at around 73, 74 levels. Hmm. The crude has come down off late pretty strong. Means hmm. the crude, the Brent crude is around $72, $73 right yeah. now. You know, so but, I think, but that, is, that is always my question. When we start this year, you never know what it has in, uh, you know, in, in a store, store for, for you. Absolutely. So, 
even when we predict a new year, you don't know what's really going to happen next year. Uh, so the best. Uh, see, uh, uh, see, the dynamics have changed, Manisha. Off late in the last decade, after this uh, 2008 uh, financial crisis, mm. uh, there's nothing. <laughs> so nothing constant yeah. or sacrosanct where yes. which you used to say the correlation so to say mm. so if you don't have those kind of a correlations uh, happening mm. um, the markets would remain uncertain and it's a guess uh, you always have the interest rate cycle for the US is one is due in December mm. and the other one for another three hikes planned for 2019 so all that would lead mm. on theoretical basis mm. appreciative uh, dollar and if sure. appreciative dollar, the dollar <laughs> denominated well, that, that really commodity. is my next one because yes, it all comes down or boils down to the U.S. dollar. But just to get the numbers out of you, since everybody says that the the gold can appreciate anywhere between eight to fifteen percent going forward, what is the number that you're working with? I think uh, I won't go beyond around five to six percent from here mm. in dollar terms. If you really ask me, that becomes around sixty dollars mm. from here, twelve thousand thirty-three, mm. around sixty seventy dollars from here. So thirteen hundred is what I'm targeting at mm. uh, by the end of uh, means the financial uh, the, by uh, by next Diwali or so so I think 1300 would be the level a crucial level which we should look into keeping all those negatives of the currency related to dollars uh, in place so I think 1300 dollars would be something and in markets if you really ask me I would be around 33 34 33 and a half 34 that's it. <laughs> you that's are being it. very very cautious yeah <laughs> I am very very cautious because I don't see any positive <laughs> happening or not except for the averse the risk averse well factor taken. of equity markets or maybe geopolitical tensions tomorrow. all right let me do a quick check on the silver prices as well because when we started this year almost everyone in unison had said that the silver prices will uh, overshoot and we perhaps will see an overperformance that clearly has not been the case but starting again from you Anisha, what's your sense on the silver prices and are you putting your bets there Yes, uh, I would like to put my bet in silver also. I think uh, prices could appreciate as much as 44,000 to 45,000 by next year. So at least I am expecting uh, from this current level uh, 18 uh, to uh, 17 to 18 percent gains from current levels. Uh, gold would uh, you know be on the higher side because of safe haven bids also. And as we are seeing somewhat relief in uh, this U.S.-China trade war, this is also helping uh, the precious metal pack. So you know silver would get support from gold also. And as base metals have also started to recover after so much of hammering, uh, it is going to help uh, again uh, to silver. So overall, uh, good gains coming in from here in silver also, at least 17 to 18%. Kunal, what is your sense? 17 to 18% is what we've begun with in sense of silver. Uh, before uh, giving the targets, the reason why silver went down is after, in the month of May, when Trump announced the trade war uh, with China, I think silver is one of the electronic, uh, the, the electric uh, demand of the silver is was expanding at a rapid pace. Mm. And the moment you got this trade war announced, it got hammered badly, with the exception that the demand from the Taiwan, Korea, uh, China will perhaps go down. And that, that's the reason why silver underperformed. Uh, but going forward, if gold prices are likely to move up, well, silver has a higher beta than gold. And if you look at the last 10 years of mining data of silver, uh, if you look at the mining growth in silver, it's minuscule. So under these circumstances, when the uh, bull run in gold gets fueled up, the reason why gold is going to go up is because of the uncertainty which is going to arise out of the monetary policy which is being adopted by the Western world. And at that time, I think silver on MCX can test easily 45 to 43,000 conservatively uh, on COMEX, 18, 18 and a half dollar or perhaps 19 dollar. But remember, silver has underperformed. The moment we, we remember 2007, 8, 9, whenever the uh, bull run of precious metal began, at that time, silver uh, outperformed uh, gold with a huge margin. So that has been a completely opposite case from last three years. And that can definitely reverse. All right. So silver price is, of course, expected to be higher as well. Yes, it's a smaller commodity, tends to be very, very volatile and does tend to outperform gold on the downside and the higher side as well. But that really brings us to the base metal prices now because silver will take a lot of cues from that. The kind of fundamentals that we have seen in the international markets, whether it has been the US and China trade concerns, the economic data that has been coming in from China, which has been slower. But the US data, of course, has been on the positive side. And of course, the kind of infrastructure rush that we have seen, 
the demand, the lower mining and of course stronger uh, deficit numbers that have been building all does point towards better metal prices going forward. Hasn't been the case in last one year because almost all the non-ferrous metals are ending this year in the negative. But going forward, and uh, let me bring this to you, Naveen, what is your sense? Well, how are you looking at the base metal prices? Anything that uh, you know, comes out as your favourite here? Tricky. <laughs> I think uh, aluminium would be something uh, which one can look into. Even mm. nickel and aluminium can be something which can, uh, which uh, during this particular year mm. till next Diwali one can look into. We are seeing uh, the prices uh, to a target of approximately 160 rupees. Uh, so buy for a target of around 160. Uh, I think uh, the stop loss is very relevant here because of the choppiness as you rightly pointed out Manisha. Put the stop loss uh, below 113 or so. I think uh, both nickel and aluminium, we would go for a buy till next Diwali. Well, last year has been very volatile. We have had many unexpected turn of events and the next year promises to be equally like that. Uh, Radisha, starting with you on this segment, what's your sense on the base metal prices? Because we have seen uh, a huge amount of volatility. The deficit for some of these commodities have been on the higher side. But overall, it really has been the China cues that the markets will continue to keep an eye on. What is your sense and what would you want to pick up for the next year now? Uh, Manisha, I think uh, base metals have given a good return kind of thing in uh, the year of 2016 and 17. So 2018 was not that good and prices saw some uh, price correction. But I am expecting from here, you know, all negatives are discounted. Uh, US-China trade wars talks are now uh, coming on a good uh, corner. And as uh, US uh, dollar, uh, dollar and Trump has announced that they are working for a deal with China and they will discuss it in the uh, G20 summit. So this has, you know, brought up a very positive sentiment and prices have started to recover. So I think for next year, this uh, positivity should continue. And I would pick two metals like uh, copper and zinc uh, because their inventories are at 10 year low levels and if you look at copper inventories they were at peak in 2018 and they have uh, fallen almost 60 percent from that level right now so continuously good demand coming in uh, for copper stocks so i'm uh, bullish on copper and even for uh, zinc also uh, we have seen that in inventories are at 10 year low level even in lme and at shanghai so copper i'm expecting uh, at least 10 percent gains and even zinc i'm expecting uh, 10 percent gains from here so bullish on copper and zinc. <laughs> All right. Uh, Prathamesh, coming to you, what are you picking up in the metal space? Until now, we have aluminum, nickel, zinc, copper, all of that really uh, among the top picks. Are you picking anything between these? Uh, Manisha, just looking at the other side of the story, if you're just looking from a returns perspective per se, I think uh, metals have fallen by 20%. So because we're dealing in futures as well as options, you can be on the sell side and take the advantage of uh, fall. So from that perspective, you still have returns on the table if you uh, would have put your money on the sell side on the metals for this year. Yes, uh, uh, China and US was uh, a cat which was hidden uh, somewhere in April, started to come out in April and May. Uh, but then if you really want to pick me one metal and be on the longest side, I think it would be mm. copper because uh, inventory levels, as Arinsha mentioned, uh, are have quite drastically fallen down, which is something that would uh, boost uh, uh, copper prices. And I think uh, copper recovery possibly uh, is uh, in, the year, in the year ahead. I think copper is something we should get possibly outperform across all the metals. The second uh, metal that I would bet on is aluminium. Uh, so the, uh, and I think uh, for 15 to 17 percent uh, gains from here on is what we're looking at aluminium uh, so these are two metals i would put on all right so those are the industrial metals to keep an eye on but the major story of this year clearly has been the crude oil prices where we have seen a huge amount of volatility actually all the other asset classes whether it has been equities or currencies or the economies on whole have been following crude oil prices very very closely where we finally have seen some correction come in kunal what is your sense now on crude? We understand that perhaps an average of $80 per barrel, that really seems to be anonymous for 2019. What levels are you working with? Actually, I'm bearish on oil. Uh, okay. And the spike which we saw in expectation that uh, there'll be uh, sanctions on Iran, in fact, it, it is going to be on. And in spite of the sanction, in spite of the lower inventories, all the news It is a supplies had, really. Which yeah, really, and uh, suddenly you see oil at $72. The fact is that people are ignoring that U.S. oil production is going to grow up quite sharply from here, the kind of investment which has been done in the last two years. 
So next year, US oil production will be somewhere at 11.5 million barrels per day. Mm. So that is one thing people are not talking. So everyone is just focusing on Iran, 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 and Iran export. But the fact is that OPEC quota, if you see last two months number, uh, slowly, slowly all the oil producers are pumping more oil. So somebody is pumping 20,000 barrels more, somebody is pumping 40,000. So already the compliance is uh, getting a little weaker and weaker. Mm. And now if OPEC decides that let us pump more or mm. let us... Uh, the oil the production cut of 1.4 million barrels if it comes down to 1 million then what's going to happen so i don't think so uh, whatever upside we've seen in oil is 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 bound to be you know top uh, and i'm expecting a gradual fall in oil prices i'm not expecting it to correct below 65 for the brent okay. and uh, 55 to 58 for the wti mm. but i would use any such volatility to go short in oil okay uh, i don't see any reason why oil should sustain at 80 dollars uh, with the studies which I follow, I think uh, $75 is a new $100 for oil. Hmm. So it's not going to sustain. So whatever spike you're going to see in oil going forward during the year, believe me, it's not going to sustain and sell the rallies. Oil is not going to sustain at these levels. Uh, the oil revolution is spreading everywhere. And for, uh, the one most important thing is the electronic car revolution in China. The way electronic car uh, production is ramping up in China, it makes no sense for the Middle East countries to uh, have a higher oil pricing or jack up the oil prices. Well, the alternative is developing very fast. So I think I maintain my view, the higher oil prices, the era of higher oil prices is going to come to an end. Okay, yes, and that really seems to be the global view as well because there are increase in supplies, record high production from US, from Russia, and with the OPEC output at 2016 highs, clearly is something that will bring the prices lower. But for the sense on, on the exact price range, uh, what is your sense, Naveen? Where can we expect? I think uh, what uh, Kunal said, I agree that on makes that sense. one count. Hmm. Uh, I think we are seeing around 70 to 73 dollars right now for the brand, and hmm. around 63, 64 dollars is somewhere the WTI is trading, Manisha. Uh, the point is we have seen high just because of the news which has come up in the last few months about the Iran sanctions and that took the prices on the upside. 11.5 uh, million barrels is what the US is currently producing and it's going to pump in more from there. So having said that with the 12 kind of uh, million barrels production, uh, the US has actually become a net exporter now rather than being a net the biggest importer. producer being biggest on the producer way. Yes. It means people are actually talking about we are OPEC. importing from us OPEC. for the first time uh -huh. in years. As I say they were hardly a producer they used to do any nothing about negligible billions um, uh, barrels or so so i think uh, with that particular note and opec kind of losing its uh, it's the charm hold. of hmm. being a hold of what you rightly said on the op on the prices i think uh, overall it seems to be 73 74 dollar you don't see a break of 70 on the uh, lower side no, 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 i don't think so it means it's going to okay. stabilize at 73 74 as he rightly said there can be a spike once the sanctions comes in see today people are talking more on the news rather than being uh, on the technical so i think uh, around 78 79 can be one spike where the markets can go up with that news but 72 73 is end of the story for all it. right with just few seconds to go Renisha, what is your level on crude Uh, I also would go on the bearish side. I expect crude oil prices won't be sustaining at these levels and I also expect uh, it going uh, towards uh, 55 to 58 dollars. I'm talking about WTI crude oil and as US is uh, pumping 11.4 uh, million barrels, Russia is pumping 11.4 million barrels, uh, Saudi Arabia is pumping 10.7 million barrels per day and continuously you know rising production from all the countries. Uh, OPEC is producing 33.3 million barrels per day. So all this high uh, production won't give uh, prices sustaining at this level. Uh, so I'm expecting for uh, MCX, the levels could come down to even 4,300, 4,400. Sell on ready should be the strategy used. Hmm. Final word from you, Prathamesh. Are you equally bearish? Do you see 20, 70 breaching as we get into the new year? Uh, no, Manish, I think mm -hmm. even uh, I am bearish on oil and it's a confident view though. Okay. The supplies are enough uh, and uh, yes, 58, 56 is what we're looking at WTI. Uh, as far as the transcendent M6 terms, I think uh, 4,200, 4,100 is what we're looking at. And add to that, if rupee appreciates from here on, the additional pressure would come on crude oil prices. 
All right. So thank you so much, uh, guys, uh, for joining us and helping us make strategies on commodities for 2019 now. So that really is the view coming across, bullish on gold and silver, stability in uh, base metal prices, even some buying picks there. But crude is a definite bearish, is the view coming in from all our guests on this panel. With that, thank you so much, Kunal, Naveen, Prathamesh and Ranisha for joining us and helping us make strategies in commodities.